Hello everyone, so today we're going to look at a classic problem from integration. The problem is if f of x is given as summation sine nx upon 4 raised to power of n, here the summation is varying from n is equal to 1 to infinity. Now the question is if the integration is given from 0 to pi f of x d of x is given as log of m by n, if it is given in this form we have to determine the value of m and n. Okay, so let's start. Now the first thing which I'm going to do here is I'm going to simplify f of x because our original objective is to integrate the function f of x with respect to x and the integration is from 0 to pi. Now first we need to simplify this summation of the series that is sine nx upon 4 raised to power of n and the summation is varying from n is equal to 1 to infinity. So let's simplify this. So let's say this is the series is equal to b and the value of b let's expand. Okay. So b will be equal to sine of x upon 4 plus sine 2x upon 4 square plus sine 3x upon 4 cube and this series going on up to infinity. Now let's consider one more series. Now the one more series I'm denoting with a and it is equal to 1 plus cos of x upon 4 plus cos of 2x upon 4 square plus cos of 3x upon 4 cube and this also goes up to infinity. Now your question is why I'm taking these two series? Why don't I solve directly? See to directly solve this it's very difficult. We'll use a concept that is Euler formula here. So basically our Euler formula is e raised to power iota theta can be written as cos theta plus iota sine theta. Now through this way it will be very easy to solve this f of x that is the given series sine nx upon 4 raised to power of n and the summation is varying from n to 1 to infinity. Now I'm going to convert this into e raised to power iota theta format. Okay, so I'm going to write this as a plus iota b. a plus iota b will be converted as 1 plus sine x upon 4 plus cos of x upon 4 and given that iota is multiplied with b, I can write this as e raised to power iota x divided by 4 plus. The next term I also I can write this as e raised to power iota 2x divided by 4 square plus this series goes on up to infinity. Now I'm going to simplify on the right hand side. So if I apply the infinite GP formula here, I'll get this as a plus iota b as the first term upon 1 minus the common ratio. The common ratio is e raised to power iota x divided by 4. Now further we simplify this, we'll get this as 4 upon 4 minus e raised to power iota x. Now this further can be written as 4 upon 4 minus. Now again I'm going to open the e raised to power iota x using the Euler formula that is cos of x minus iota sin of x. Now from here I'm going to determine the value of b that is our given series f of x. Now the best way to do is on both sides I'm going to compare the coefficient of imaginary on both sides. That is I'm going to compare the coefficient of iota on both sides. To compare the coefficient of iota on both sides first I need to simplify this expression 4 upon 4 minus cos of x plus minus iota sin of x. To simplify this I'm going to multiply by 4 minus cos of x plus iota sin of x and divide by the same thing that is 4 minus cos of x plus iota sin of x. So let's multiply and check what we are getting here. Now I only I'm only interested in the imaginary part that is 4 sin of x whole divided by 4 minus cos of x whole square plus sine square of x and if you simplify this will be equal to b and if it's further if you simplify then b will be getting this as 4 sine of x whole divided by let's open this so we'll get 16 plus cos square plus sine square cos square plus sine square will be 1 then 16 plus 1 is 17 here minus 8 times cos of x now this is the best way to get the value of b otherwise there are different methods are there to solve the value of f of x but this is comparatively very easy. Now we got the function f of x now we can easily integrate it will be a piece of cake for us. Now let's integrate f of x. Now in the previous slide we have calculated the value of summation of the series that is f of x. Now we're going to integrate f of x. In the given question integration 0 to pi f of x t of x is given as log of m by n and our objective is to determine the value of m and n here. So let's integrate. So we have integration 0 to pi we have this as 4 sine of x whole divided by 
17 minus 8 cos of x d of x. Now the first thing I'm going to see here is see the function and derivative are clearly visible here. So my substitution will be 17 minus 8 cos of x. I'm going to take this as y. Now I'm going to get the differential here. So we need to differentiate on both sides. So we'll get this as 8 sin of x d of x will be equal to dy. Now in order to get 8 sin of x in numerator, I'm going to multiply and divide by 2 here. So our value of the integration will be equal to We'll get this as 1 by 2 integration 8 sin of x d of x will be equal to dy whole divided by 17 minus 8 cos of x is y. Now let's adjust the limit. So when the value of x is equal to 0, we'll get cos of x is 1 and we'll get the value of y as 17 minus 8 that is that will be equal to 9. And when the value of x is equal to pi then cos of x will be minus 1 and we'll get this as 17 plus 8 that is 25 here. Now integration of 1 by y is very easy that is 1 by y ln of y and the lower limit is 9 upper limit is 25. So if we get the value we will get this as 1 by 2 ln 25 minus ln 9 that can be written as 1 by 2 times ln 25 upon 9 and further if we take the root here then immediately we will get the answer as ln of 5 divided by 3. Now if you compare with the question it is given that the value of this integral will be equal to ln m by n and yeah, yes we got the value in the form of log. Now we can easily compare the values of m and n here. So the value of m from here will be equal to 5 and the value of n that will be equal to 3. So that will be our final answer and that will be all.